abused staff and threatened to open the door. First poop to power plant opens in Sanford, Florida. Many wonder where number two will be. The casualties of America's wars that you would not have heard much about on Memorial Day, the 1,350 civilian contractors killed in Iraq and Afghanistan, and 29,000 injured, based on official record at least. Roger Plotow, an Idaho newspaper publisher, favors subscription fees. To just give it all away on a website is completely blind and idiotic. Having once refused to get out of bed for less than $10,000, what did Cindy Crawford do when a European discount supermarket asked her to plug their budget shampoo? Plug the shampoo, but of course, at the right price. A Bloomberg correspondent reports that Mercy, a transsexual, will continue to be blocked from entering medical school. This is in spite of Egyptian court orders. Al-Azhar's medical school maintains she can't go to men's classes because she's impersonating a woman, or to the women's class because she was actually a man. Ex-convict hosts Hot for Teacher Night. Mary Kayler Turno and her former sixth grade student, the father of her two youngest children, host a hot for teacher night at a Seattle nightclub. And finally, moron Lou just won't believe it. A desperate construction worker lit a match in a pitch black portable Lou to look for toilet paper and blew up his bum. The busting builder accidentally sparked chemical fumes which exploded as he sat down. Sven Friedman, 33, was left with severe burns to his buttocks. The incident happened on a building site in southern Germany. Welcome back to Counterculture. In books, our featured Canadian title, author Chris Arsenault in Blowback exposes the Canadian military's use of Agent Orange in a New Brunswick town 1956 to 1984. As the Dominion reports, blowback happens when chemicals sprayed in the air catch wind currents and blow back towards those doing the spraying and fall on homes, farms and people. You are listening to Counterculture, your new socially progressive radio show. Now your Canadian Star Watch. Halifax's own classified, fresh from an amazing show in Ottawa, continues his tour across Canada. Check out his latest release in HMV, and we hope to interview classified in the coming weeks here on Counterculture. William Shatner denies that J.J. Abrams ever presented him with the opportunity to have a cameo appearance in the new Star Trek prequel, but has nothing but warm w words for Abrams and the new Star Trek movie. Nobody ever came to me and said, we have a cameo. Okay. And maybe you wrote it, but it never presented itself to me. But the truth is, I wouldn't have wanted to do a cameo because that you would have clipped that out of me. It doesn't fit. Get up, I get down. Welcome back. In the Ottawa Arts and Entertainment calendar, are you ready for some great jazz? Watch out for the Ottawa International Jazz Festival, June 25 to July 5. You can purchase tickets at these locations. Compact Music, the Rideau Centre Kiosk, online at ticketmaster.ca, Sounds Unlikely, Rob's Music Westboro, CD Warehouse, Metro Music and the Ottawa Folklore Centre. 100% Canadian. An estimated 80,000 Westfest goers will walk the streets of this 100% Canadian festival from June 12 to 14, 2009. Best of all, Westfest is free and everyone is welcome to help us celebrate. Performers drawn to Ottawa. The Magnetic North Theatre Festival kicks off on June 3rd. The festival, which returns to Ottawa every second year, promotes Canadian theatre, artists and producers and showcases some of the most promising independent theatre in Canada. Tickets can be purchased on the festival website, by phone, or at the National Arts Centre box office. Please stay tuned for more arts and entertainment announcements throughout the show. Now, the North American auto industry is in shambles, or at least that's what we're led to believe. General Motors plans to cut 40% of its dealer network, notifying 245 of its 709 dealerships that they would not be renewing their contracts. Chrysler has announced its bankruptcy plans, and with the world focused on greener living, we will all commute by bicycles by 2012, right? Wrong. Amidst the current economic turmoil, Statistics Canada revealed last Wednesday that Canadian sales on new automobiles actually rose 6.3% in all provinces in March. And the biggest seller? Trucks and sport sports utility vehicles. 
Apparently seeing a few cars in front of you is not enough. Oh no. With a new vehicle purchase, it is also important to be able to see to the next suburb or town for that matter. Maybe automakers should quit listening to the enviro-friendly advocates out there with their hybrid babble and build cars the way the average Canadian really wants it. A supersized gas-guzzling monster truck. Wouldn't the world be a far better place? And again in the community arts calendar. Sisters are doing it for themselves. The 15th annual YMCA, YWCA Women of Distinctions Awards will be held on June 1 at the National Arts Centre. The event starts at 7pm and will honour 42 local women for their inspirational work in the community. Tickets are $95 and must be purchased before the event. It's time to get your boogie on. On Friday, June the 5th, the Parrot Resource Centre will host the Tune Into June dance and silent auction at the Senelide Centre. The event will feature live 1950s dance demonstrations and a silent auction with proceeds going to needy families in the Ottawa community. Tickets are $25 and fully tax deductible. Here's what else is making the news. Aboriginal news and Canadian politics on the hill. The Harper government is pledging to crack down on the growing contraband cigarette industry. The plan was unveiled last Wednesday and is aimed at reducing the number of illegal cigarettes that are seized across the country. Part of the strategy involves the government launching a public awareness campaign to try to convince Canadians to stop buying the illegal cigarettes. The production of these cigarettes stems from some factories using cheap tobacco from illegal tobacco production in the U.S. to manufacture unmarked cigarettes. The market price is around $20 for 200 cigarettes, and it's easy to see how the system could severely impact the health of those targeted, generally low-income earners. In Nova Scotia, polls suggest the NDP are favourites to win the upcoming election, with the Liberals following by about 6%. The first debate between the three party leaders took place last week, with the economy dominating the discussion. Nova Scotians will head to the polls on June 9. International news. In Somalia, new conflicts have arisen between local government militiamen and Islamist al-Shabhab fighters. Since last weekend, the capital Mogadishu has been rocked with mortar and machine gunfire from the Islamist rebel group trying to overthrow President Shahik Ahmed's government. More than 16,000 civilians have been killed since the beginning of 2007 in the country, which has been at war since 1991. Today's guest is Thaho Ke Tote, a First Nation social activist. Welcome to AVR 95.7 FM in Ottawa. Uh, we're grateful to have you here. and. Um, we're grateful for you to share your insights on um, some of the um, challenges and concerns that, you know, that have been sort of uh, misrepresented that's been going on with the Mohawk Nation and uh, how we can move forward to redress these vital issues, whether it's treaty rights, basic social justice, and other areas. So thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you for having me. So, um, so, you're, so I've, I was reading your bio, and um, you um, actually um, started off as a, a, an artist and a musician, and, and since that time sort of, a, sort of further evolved in your interests as far as truth, justice, and peace? Correct, yes. And, um, and, and, and sort of uh, as far as your in sort of involvements and stuff, um, I guess have you done, um, I've, we've, I, 